These magnificent sailing ships are now traveling the world as sail training vessels or sitting in museum dry docks. Some, however, are returning to the seas, plying the trade that they were originally designed for, cargo transport. This is the schooner Apollonia on the Hudson River and the brig Tres Hombres in the Atlantic. 80% of the world's trade is transported around the globe by ships, mainly in containers. This form of shipping had proved to be the fastest and most efficient mode of transport for everything from building materials to food. But the shipping industry has hit a turning point for which there is no going back. Diesel fuel for these ships will be banned from 2030 and onwards as shipping contributes 3% of the world's carbon emissions and there are thousands of these ships sailing every day. So to power large ships on long voyages, designers are returning to the past and designing wind-powered merchant ships. In fact, wind rotors, kites and foil sails are already part of this new technology, but only assist in lowering the amount of fuel used. Some designs are incorporating solar as well, but at present this is nowhere near enough to power such large vessels using only solar. However, the elephant in the room seems to have been ignored. Solar-assisted sail power. The James Craig, still sailing out of Sydney, is one of the last 19th century sailing traders. These vessels were replaced with coal-powered steam engines and then diesel. But as the world struggles to lower greenhouse gases, both of these dirty options will be replaced with new technology. Wind power is the obvious choice and has a proven track record. Now no longer seen as too slow, but as a winning green alternative that can be solar assisted to power the electric auxiliaries. Visionary designer and boat builder Derek Ellard has over 40 years experience in building timber and fiberglass yachts. Over that time, he has honed his skills in producing faster and more efficient rigs and hull designs, while still maintaining traditional lines that have made his boats so popular around the world. We pioneered a kit system for our traditional craft and went on to sell over 300. The same principle, classic boats built with modern technology, applies to our sailing cargo clippers. They're evolutionary, not revolutionary, combining the best of the old with the best of today. Derek has also designed electric-powered ferries such as the elegant Secret 33. You've got something which looks and feels like it's a hundred or more years ago, but in fact it is bang up to date in its underpinnings. Technically, you could run all day just on solar. You can use this boat day after day after day with no fuel costs at all. However, for the last four years, Derek has turned his skills into designing sailing ships that are solar assisted and developed around container and pallet systems. The hulls are super efficient, the rig is a modern gaff catch and the motors are electric. The batteries are charged by solar and propeller regeneration. These ships look remarkably like the clippers of old. His C-180 schooner is the same size as the James Craig. But she carries 36 containers, 12 passengers and the perfect bowsprit for selfies. These ships are not only designed to take cargo, but there's obvious tourist opportunities as well. Yet behind the scenes, modern technology is hard at work, enabling them to compete with one big advantage. The fuel is abundant and free. We aim to mass produce them in steel and by using off-the-shelf components, the costs are kept down. Our kit systems means that smaller yards can build their own clippers. They can take containers, pallets or even trucks. Unlike the huge container ships of the future that will sail the globe, Derek's designs are mostly based on inter-island transport that has been largely ignored but is still essential to regions such as the Pacific Islands located right on Australia's doorstep. 
The Pacific nations are often sighted on low-lying coral reefs and in shallow waters, so rely on small vessels to transport everything from goods and produce to tourists and locals alike. Container ships are far too big to, uh, to be of any use to most islands, but our ships can get into the smallest harbours. When diesel is no longer available, how will these small countries maintain their supply chains across large areas with no ships or trucks? Australia has this electric and battery technology now. And now is also the time to help and fill a very large hole in the market. Derek's clever, efficient designs are all based around standard container and pallet sizes and innovative methods of loading and unloading which are essential for such small communities with little harbour or terminal infrastructure. On our boats the main engines are above deck, the sails, and our long-term sailmaker Ben Kelly has the global technology of North Sails to back him. Any sort of modern evolution of technology still finds its place on classic boats. The good part about this technology also, especially if we're talking about sails on boats in remote locations is because it's more like boat building technology it can more easily be worked on uh, by a crew member. Uh, if this was to tear in half you could sand the surface, prepare a patch that, that North Sails sent to the boat or they had on the boat in their spares and you could literally glue this back together. Remote repairs are, are quite a good option where a Dacron you can't glue to it, you've got to manually sew. Derek Ellard has also consulted a well-respected New South Wales shipyard, Harwood Marine, who can see the potential in a range of zero emission ships engineered for cost-effective global mass production. We've worked through the South Pacific for about the last 30 years and of course it's the lifeblood. It's the lifeblood of the community is their um, external freight service. I think if we step back in time, we certainly are talking about doing that with sails uh, and using the sun to power things. Uh, all of these sorts of technologies are natural and uh, it, it only makes common sense that islanders go back to doing what islanders used to do. I think any step in that direction is a positive step. The market's there, the plans are drawn and the shipyard's ready to go. All it needs now is some funding. The 2030 diesel deadline is not that far away and the future of localised shipping is now in the balance. Free fuel really is a no-brainer. We really have to do this. We have no choice. For more information on how your company can be involved, please contact Derek Ellard at GoSailCargo.com.